Doesn't feel good. No oh, man. Man of War and Frostbolt face, obviously, right? Even then, uh, that's awful. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> bad. Like Flame Waker on its own rolls into the coin death fight, which you just expect these warriors to have yeah. at all times. I mean, like, if you play Flame Waker, Armor Up Shield Slam kills you, Coin Death Bite kills you, Fire Your War Axe plus Coin Cruel Taskmaster kills you. There's a few plays that will really punish you. Even Acolyte of Pain's an issue because you then have to use Flame Cannon or Frostburst on that measly three drop. Worm Ping is super weak, but I don't know he's going for Frostbolt, so. You know, he locks out the weapon for next turn, so he's protecting his mana worm here. But, uh, you know, Stan Sivka may not feel too bad. He can just maybe slam uh, Nakalai Pain here just to contest it, force a trade, maybe to remove some pressure, or he just go for Armor Smith. But like you said, Armor Smith, he could keep around just, you know, in case he hits that mirror entity. What do you like from him here? I mean, I don't even mind the armor smith under you mentioned. I mean, it, it is weak to flame cannon, but it gives you a tiny bit more armor for all that's worth in case shield slime ever becomes uh, something relevant. You could also develop the fiery war axe. It scares Kalento maybe into not uh, playing something that he wants to play at the moment. Now, Kalento can take this match super chill. He can just play it out, see how it goes. Starting Sifka on the other hand, every play he makes needs to be perfect what? because no. he knows every game counts. Yeah, and more go, than counts. It, yeah. And to go 3 0 3 1 against Kalento is no easy feat, yeah. even for someone as talented as Stan Sifka. So basically, Stan Sifka can drop a game. If he drops one game, he's on the rose, but he's still into it. But like, if he gets a first win, He's gonna feel a lot more comfortable, right? Because all he has to do is, you know, he can afford one loss pa past that point, uh, and he'll still be fine. It's just really important for him that he wins at least the first one to stay safe. Double flame cannon. I didn't know he was running too, so he has a way to deal with Zama Smith and keep the pressure on with the mana worm. But now the freeze effect is gone, these weapons can start doing some work next turn. Yeah, I'm a little worried here. I mean, Kalento might think that a flame cannon with, uh, you know, ping succubus. That, that could be the better play, right? There's always a chance maybe that this is what you want to do. Sure, you might lose a card that you do need, but the 4-3 alongside the Mana Worm is a pretty big threat. Um, oh my god, full minion mode engaged. 50%. I mean, he's got a, a oh. chance to keep the Archmage. Nope. Hits the Antonidas, that's one of his late game options of a burst in this warrior down. Now we've seen the magnitude of armor Sansika can generate with stuff like Justica, but he does have board, he, ha he does have tempo, and this is a mage that really relies on keeping that board. Yeah, and if you think about it though, you know, Stansivka can generate armor through the armor smith attacking and his hero power, which means he can go for an armor of shield slam on the 4-3 and use a fiery war axe to finish off the mana worm or, you know, the flame waker if he wants to. So I think uh, he's going to be get getting a really good board clear here and Kalento is stop decking already. Yeah, I think he should try and take out two minions here. Uh, I think the Flame Waker is definitely a threat. Uh, the Mana Worm can become bigger, of course, and the, and Succubus, you kind of know where it stand, you stand with it. So, like you said, he can run run the uh, Armor Smith into something, Armor Up, Shield Slam, and then uh, go from there. Fire Watch going to come down, probably going to hit the Flame Waker. I like that play from Stan. Okay, it's very uh, straightforward, but he knows what he you know he knows where he's going with this. He knows that he can clear two minions. Archmage is gone, so there's no more threat of a crazy burst from Kalento. Dr. Boom is as good as it gets. This is such a clean clear-up. I mean, he doesn't clear everything, but after with just two flame cannons in Kalento's hand, it's going to be tough. Oh, that could turn the game around. Succubus number two. That could be very powerful. Blinktron, Blinktron. overriding the fiery war. That might just be bad, but I think you just have to do it. And here we roll the dice, and we find a true silver champion, I think? Truce of a champion for the warrior, uh, I believe, I'm not too sure, and King's Defender for the mage, allowing him to uh, keep his mana worm safe. So he gets to keep the board here, but Truce of a champion is going to do some work and give him some health as well. There's the Justica I was talking about earlier. This could play an essential role in basically Stan Sivka snowballing his life out of control, yeah. out of the range of this mage. What's amusing though, is that I think Stan Sivka had way more than enough weapons. He didn't need that one. <laughs> yeah, too many weapons, but you can't complain. Like, I mean, it does heal you at least. He is uh, getting some sustain on his health there. Oh, Frostbolt to deny the weapon use from uh, Stan Sivka. Giving Kalento a little around. bit more breathing room. I mean, he can still find uh, a Dr. Boom off the top. And Flame Cannon's gonna come down here. Doesn't have to use his own weapon in order to clear this armor. Oh, another oh, weapon! Oh, goodness! 
How many weapons do you need, Garrosh? I know you're a warrior uh, and all, but come on, man. I, mean, I get the point, Garrosh. We know you're strong. Just stop. We get it. Shield made him very nice here. 5-5 five, five body. Giving him 5 health as well. He wants to stay nice and healthy against this man. Lento gets the perfect top deck to go with that flame cannon. Giving him a little bit more pressure. Stensifka, you know, he, he is running 2 brawls. Uh, so I don't think he's too worried just yet, and he does have the ability to use the True Silver to clean up the Drake that's on the board here. So after that, when he develops Dr. Boom, if he does, I think he's going to be on his way to just stabilize and, uh, you know, start dropping the big bombs. Yeah, big bombs indeed. Here comes Dr. Boom, and this is going to put some pressure on Kalento. Let's see if he finds a spell in order to deal with this. Arcane Blast is definitely a spell that could help, but these boom bots could cause a little bit of mischief and maybe even clear Kalento's board. Yeah, I feel like at this point, Kalento is uh, hoping for the best top decks possible. There's not many of them that he could get. And now he's going to RNG Jesus with the Flame Waker, oh. which actually works very one, one. well. How's that even possible? I've never seen such a good boom bot. Like, 1-1, one, one, <laughs> they did nothing. <laughs> oh. I mean, if they had hit face for 1-1, one, one, that would have been even better. But you can't win them all, right? That's Tensifka with the options, though. So more weapons, he's got Brawl, he can Shield Maiden for Sustain, I think Shield Maiden armor up. Pretty just nice to guard armor up, I mean, he's just Fiery oh, War Axe with Shield Maiden looks good. Oh, the overlay moved a little bit here, we're gonna have to get that fixed in a second, shouldn't be too long. Clears the board with the weapon, gains some more health, and when turn 10 rolls by, he's got armor up just to cut armor up. So he gains 6 health, put a 6-3 down, and then he can armor up every turn. And he just concedes, so Stansifka's already on the way to finding that 3-0 or 3-1, taking the first game there. Yeah, I mean, what's really nice from now on is that, you know, assuming he goes with a 66% win rate, he's fine. Uh, he only has to win twice and lose once. That's the like the worst case scenario for him. He has to get a 66% win rate. Ideally 100, of course. Uh, but with 3 games potentially to go, He's got a good chance. He just has to win the first one, then lose one, and win another. Gul'dan, uh, the Warlock deck, handlock for Sansifka. In a, in t yesterday, he did pretty well for him, and it was working nicely, but today, he's been missing on just those key cards to stop these super aggressive decks. Ties had a really convincing win against him. Uh, Dog also found a convincing win against the handlock as well. It was really tough for him to come back, but... Let's see if he can actually find some taunt activated. I don't, I, I don't think I've seen a Sun Fury protector from him today. No, he runs double Argus, I know for a fact, but I don't know about the Sun Furies. I mean, he did have to make cuts, right, for the double BGH. He's only running one heal bot, in case uh, you didn't know that. It's a very dangerous line to tread when the metagame has shifted to a very aggressive lineup. You know, we're talking Secret Paladin, we're talking Tempo Mage, we're talking Hunter. I think Stan Sifka was more prepared to deal with handlocks, uh, but he does have the Sun Fury here. Well, there she is. She's been hiding for an entire day and finally finds her way to Stan Sifka's hand, which is going to help relieve some pressure off him, especially with something like an Ancient Watcher. Double Mortal Coil, a bit clunky against the Mage, much better against the Paladins and the Hunters, but you may find some use for it. Yeah, you typically always find a way to use it effectively. Now, I think Stan Sifka... My, I, do you ever consider going for the Iron Beak Owl silence play? Oh, for sure. I mean, Oh he my fighting. god, Kalento with the Trogzor on turn 3. Trogs, oh man, this card had such high expectations uh, when GBG was having the build up to its release. And I remember I actually crafted Trogsaw as right. my first <laughs> card when GBG right. dropped, and I never used it. I've never played that card. Well, I mean, you know what? <laughs> if it were four mana, maybe <laughs> I'd play it. I think I'd play it with four mana. That'd yeah. be crazy. Let's see what Stansifka gets here. I think the silence on the Watcher might be tempting enough to take. It kills the Mana Worm, puts you in a position where you can handle the board. And now Kalento's Trogzor simply doesn't look appealing enough for the most part. Uh, he might have to play it a bit slower, maybe Frostbolt, Arcane Missiles. Yeah, Frostbolt the Yeti. Well, what became a Yeti at least. Ancient Watcher can go down. And then he can even Arcane Blast the... Uh Maybe the just a thing. Wants. I don't know. Mad Scientist also gives him the ability to get a duplicate for Trogzor that's coming oh down man. next turn. Because he but does have his mirror entity in hand already. But they're going to be six mana Trogzor, so they're not going to be as uh, efficient as this guy. I think you're happy to get seven of them against the. You, you take an, any you can get against the handlock. For them to defeat them, they have to get literally giants. They can't use any mix of dark bombs or hellfires uh, to use, you know, to wipe the board cleanly. Yeah, they just develop more minions there. Drake's gonna come down, becomes a Yeti again, so 
No, those yeah. stats are pretty decent, right? Even when fighting these aggressive decks. Frogzor comes down. Golden Frogzor. <laughs> Expensive because space was priceless. <laughs> Uh, He's like, what on earth? <laughs> Why is anyone playing this guy? Why is this even in Portal? <laughs> right. I mean, the Shadow Flame is actually one of the few ways you can handle a Trogzor, no matter how you look at it. It's one of the very few ways, in fact, that you can do so. However, you need to be able to deal 5 damage uh, to everything. Because otherwise, what you run into is you can't kill the burly Rockjaw Trogs that come from it. He just keeps spawning more and more of those 4 drops for free every single time you play a spell. And the thing is, as well, he just tested for the trap with uh, Sun Fury, so now he knows his duplicate, so now he knows he's not going to kill that Trogzor on his turn until he finds another target at least. Yeah, and Kalento doesn't want to play Mirror Entity because if he does, then he gives Tensifka the ability to just kill whatever he plays. For instance, if uh, Kalento decides to go for Mirror Entity and Stansifka plays an Owl number 2, uh, then maybe Stansifka can simply kill the Owl and give Kalento two copies of that one instead. Ooh, another Ancient Watcher there. That might come in handy a little bit later with that Shadow Flame. Definitely, but now if Stensivka plays this, he's feeding into the Trogzor. The question is, maybe that's fine, right? Oh uh, yeah, maybe giving him a couple of Trogzors uh, is not too bad, because he has answers to them later in, in the Molten Giants when it gets to that point, maybe even the Shadow Flames. And there's 7 drop 6-6. Six, six. They're a bit clunky at the moment for Kalento, but maybe he'll find some use for them later. I'm, I'm sure he'll find uses for anything here with the Arcane Blast, the Flame Waker, the Unstable Portal. It's really hard not to find a good play on this turn. So we'll see what Kalento ends up going for. He's got many options. He can wipe the board, develop Mirror Entity, uh, play the Portal, maybe develop the Flame Waker as well. Yeah, there's a lot of options here. He decides to actually hit it first and then maybe double Arcane Blast AML Ganis or a Doom Guy that comes out. That's pretty clever from Kalento. Yeah, it's a very heads up play. He's, he's you know trying to figure out whether or not uh, it's worth it, and right now it definitely is. But he's going to run into the Ancient Watcher here uh, if with the Mirror Entity. Not something he's going to be too happy about, I don't think. No, Ancient Watcher is definitely not something you don't want to see on your side of the field because most of the time. Uh, these Tempo Mages don't have access to activate them unless they run something like Clockwork Gnome or uh, Toshly where they find those taunt uh, taunt uh, spare parts. Yeah. Now Stensifka here, he can play the Watcher, but again, uh, we need to keep talking about the way the Trogs are operate. It's a 6-6, six, six, which means you need to, when you Shadow Flame, deal 6 damage. Not only that, but you also just need to be able to kill it in one shot, because if you use two spells, you're spawning more 5 health minions. It's a very difficult process to go through, and I'm not even sure Stensifka's deck is necessarily equipped to deal with that stuff. For sure. I mean, like, Infernals from Jaraxxus is something that matches up really nicely on the Shadow Flame, right. but it's very situational. You've got to get to a point where you can actually play Jaraxxus, and on a turn after we can develop the minion and play the Shadow Flame, and that's a lot later in the game, and it may be too late. So Kalento here gets a Void Caller, not really impactful for him of course right now, unless he gets a Demon from Unstable Portal, which we've seen happen, but there's a lot of spells that he can play if he wants to just play all the spells, literally, or again, you just play Trogzor. <laughs> Trogzor. Oh man, I didn't think I'd ever see this card. I mean, it's interesting because the amount of spells that Kalento has really enables him to do a lot of work. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you can basically clear anything. Apart from maybe a Jaraxxus, I mean Jaraxxus is a bit out of his reach, but yeah, we'll I'm not even sure by how much now that I think about it. Oof. But how much is it really out of his reach, right? Um, now, now it is. Well, well, I guess we'll see. Maybe Kalento will just go for it. Unstable portal. Number one. What's he gonna find this time? Oh, wow! Galuix, please play spells, Mr. Warlock. I've got a Flame Waker to use. Another thing with Gallywix as well, he's a 6 8. That is a bulky guy. Yeah, it's a 5 8, I think, but oh, a 5 way, 8, sorry. Yeah, 6 mana 5 8 is definitely uh, above average. You know, it's Boulder Fist Ogre stat line with a really interesting ability. And these unstable portals for Kalento are turning this game in a clown fiesta. This is just crazy. Trogzors, <laughs> Trogzors, Gallywix. Um. I mean, Stan Sifka has enough pressure on his shoulders with this game. <laughs> when you start throwing these curveballs in, these crazy situations you'll never encounter, just it's just even harder. I mean, he's got answers at least. You know, He's able to play the Moral Coil here, cycle uh, through his deck, maybe find something that's really good. He can always taunt up the Jaraxxus, which is going, regardless of how you look at it, to put a dent in Kalento's ability to handle the board. I mean, oh, yeah, 3-10 is really big. 
That's really good for him, of course. Um, but another thing, he's got the Ancient Watcher as well. He's got the Sun Fury. He has a Giant as well. What? The Secret's would, still up, right? Giant. No, Secret is gone, actually. It gave him the Void Caller. So, in fact, Kalento here at the top, I don't think, has a Secret left uh, on the board. The, the Void Caller triggered it. Uh, the Giant, however, with the Sun Fury, I think, looks like a good play. Kalento doesn't have a really good way to deal with all that stuff. And if spells are played, Trade Prince Gallywix gives them back. Oh, it looks like he wants a low fed to make sure uh, there's no more spells coming out from Kalento. He's seen enough Arcane Blast for one day. Yeah, I think right now, Stensifka, this is a very slow play in that uh, you play Lothab first. You know you're not going to get Fireball to death. It's pretty obvious just because there's no way for those spells to be played. So he's just buying himself some time, putting himself in a position where he can maybe get an even bigger swing with Molten Giant, Antique Healbot, and Sun Fury on the same turn with a really good Shadow Flame perhaps on a Giant in case he has to handle something like Drop Lord. It looks like the underdogs of uh, GVG are coming out here. <laughs> Oh, it's redemption, right? Oh. Okay, so that changes things a little bit. Maybe later on. I think what San Francisco wanted to see there was maybe some aggression on a, on his face. So he could play the Molten Giant for free. And then maybe heal bot after, then taunt up and start setting up a bit of a wall. But Yeah, I think so too. I think that's what he was hoping for. But Kalenta went for the trades, and rightfully so. Because he didn't have any Firebolt in hand. He didn't have any Frostbolts in hand. Oh, another taunt activator there. Decent pickup here for Stan Sifka. He can go for the Giant, he can go for the Defender, but my thought is he may want to keep the uh, Giant for Shadow Flame. With those Trogzors around, uh, you might get a little worried, unless you really plan never to use spells whatsoever. And you can't do that as a Warlock, for sure. So, yeah, I agree there that the Molten Giant finds oh. a lot of value. There's a good play here. You attack uh, with Jaraxxus into Trogzor, then you defend of Argus, the... Uh, the Argent, the uh, the Watcher, and then you coin with Gallywix's coin and Shadow Flame, wiping the Trogzor and the three five that comes out of it. Oh, it's yeah. not a great play, but it's, it's a not play. Too bad. It's a play. So he's just going to set the home wall here. So he plays the Giant and protects it. Maybe he wants to find some value here with the Giant being able to smash into face. You know, get some damage. He still has to win this game. Yeah, I mean, Kalento cannot overextend with the Trogzor. The second one on the board would literally give Stensifka the single most awesome Shadow Flame ever. And now, copies of spells will be given around. Well, yeah, for sure. Coins are gonna fly everywhere. Oh no, the Gallywix doesn't give spells from this side, does he? It's only the other way around. Yeah, when the Stensifka ends up playing spells. Oh, yeah, it's not a two-sided lore walker show, unfortunately. If you play the coin, uh, Gallywix's coin... I don't know much about this card. It triggers. It, it does trigger, and then Sansifka get, then Kalento gets a coin. No, then. no. Gallito, the, it was actually made, exactly, because they were running into the issue of if we just give them a coin, <laughs> they just keep shifting back and forth. So Gallywix's coin has a property that it doesn't actually uh, trigger Gallywix. It actually says so on the card, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's good, then. <laughs> you don't want to be yeah. given Tempo Mage mass amounts of coins. I feel like Stensifka right now is uh, pretty far ahead. I'm getting that feeling that, you know, after this turn, he's in a position to, you know, stabilize very effectively. It's because the, sh the Shadow Flame seem to do so much work, which is uh, what he really wants. Ooh, Shadow full health. Shadow Flame, Heal Bot. It's definitely something you can consider. So Stensifka here, he's got the ability. He can attack into the Shredder with the Giant. Then use a Shadow Flame, right? That is going to wipe the Trogzor, wipe whatever spawns out of it, wipe what comes out of the Shredder, and then he can play a Heal Bot. Definitely. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, we'll see what he does. I mean, he's really on the ropes here. If Kalento top decks some more burn, uh, this could be the end of him. But otherwise, I think after this uh, this sequence of plays, there's a good chance Tensive because it's just perfectly fine. Yeah, this might be the way which... Uh, oh, he actually hits the Trogzor. Interesting. Maybe he wants to hang on to that Shadow Flame for a little bit longer in case he needs it uh, a little bit later. Oh my god, if the heal bot heals Stan Sifka, the Shadow Boxer can absolutely crush this little giant. Oh man. Oh my goodness. This game has literally turned into a clown fiesta. Malganus might just come out as a result of this uh, little scare. Yep, he's demanding a fireball ping on this Malganus, or at least a fireball trade, and it, that fireball won't be going to his face then at least, so he can protect himself. And there's still an 8-1 Giant to consider as well, you can ping that off, it might disrupt something you want to play. Trogzor number 2 comes down, 
three Trog Souls in one game, who the fuck? I'm not even sure what's going on anymore. This game looks like uh, nothing I've ever seen before. Now, Stan Sivka is in a position now that he absolutely has to make sure he's healed up, right? He can't just um, play the mountain and taunt it up, because if the Malganus dies, and if Fireball is top deck in any way, Stan Sivka's dead. Frostbolt would kill him. Uh, I think he's already played both, but either way, he needs to make sure that he's healthy enough. I always seems he doesn't really care. Stan Sivka's got... He just taunts up the giant here, protects the Malganus, and starts creating a deadly board of hims for himself here. Troxel, yeah, he can't get through that on his own. Yeah, Kalento is in a I think Kalento might actually not be able to, to push through. It, do you play your minions for because of their threatening value, and hope that you eventually top deck Fireball, or do you just wait for Archmage to get you that guaranteed Fireball? Because if you play it now, you're really forcing Stan Sivka to, to trade away his board if he doesn't have an AoE. I mean, you still need to take out Milganus. It's still a problem. Without it being taken out, Fireball to the face is never going to do anything. So you need one Fireball or something to take out the Milganus exactly. first. It's just, yeah, it's just looking really bleak for him. So it looks like he's just going to go for the big board develop and Shadow Flame. Looking very promising right there. So we're looking at a total of 17, 18, 19 damage. Lethal here oh, for lethal. Stan Sivka. He can't possibly be missing. Wait, what? Oh my god, I had a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bomb, what a top deck for him there. Hellfire would have worked. Yeah, for sure. So he managed to close out this game. Stan Sivka is so much closer to guaranteeing a spot in tomorrow's finals. Yeah, Stan Sivka just has to make sure that he either wins the next game or that Kalento only takes one. So he's got a game to lose and it wouldn't be too bad. He can, he can play with one round at least. So what's left is Druid. So his Drew could be having a tough time here actually against this lineup. Uh, Face Hunter may be the one thing he can fight against, but Paladin's going to be tough, Tempo Mage is going to be tough. Yeah. Oh no, he banned the Hunter, sorry, so yeah, he banned uh, the Patron. The, he always keeps the Patron alive. The Druid does pretty well against it, so if it comes down to this, there's a stand that Stan Sivka just goes in. What's interesting is Kalento's order of picking matters. Because he, if he just gets two wins with his two best decks, it doesn't matter. Stan Sivka's just out. Um, so. Kalent, usually you would say that Conquest, you know, the, the, it doesn't really matter in which order you pick, but when it comes down to tiebreakers like these ones, Kalento picking Secret Paladin into Temple Mage and winning with those two guarantees that Stensivka just gets knocked out, but Stensivka has a godly hand. Look at the hand comparison. So Kalento playing, you know, an aggressive... Uh, it's got mid-range elements, but it has an aggressive start. Secret Keepers, Knife Jugglers, that sort of thing. None of them in his opening hand. Stensivka, Wildgrove, Pile to Treader two of the key cards that innovate as well. And Big Game Hunter, and we've talked about how uh, you can just kind of hero power a solo a, uh, solo mysterious challenger on its own, proc the Noble Sack, and then uh, the Avenge hits the challenger, exactly. and then you can BGH it. So that could play an important role in uh, taking out that mysterious challenger in the future. Clinto does find a one draw, but there's no point playing it here when you can just develop a one one. It's going to do nothing more than what uh, it's already doing. And Stan Sivka here gets, if he wants to play Wild Growth, curves into his Keeper of the Grove a little bit easier. Uh, what do you do about this one one? Do you ever kill it? What modifies your lines of thinking here? Cog Hammer could be a thing that you could be worried about. Uh, that's a great point. He keeps the 1-1, one, one, it's going to be alive, and there's going to be a two-attack weapon on the board, and all you've got is a Keeper of the Grove. So I could see a world in which Stan Sipka goes for the trade, but if you trade, you're still being punished by Cog Hammer, just a little less harsh though. I mean, the Cog Hammer doesn't find the minion value with the, uh, the effect it gets, but it goes to the face here, doesn't get punished by a Cog Hammer. <laughs> Right, so Stan Sivka here with the opportunity to go for a Keeper of the Grove Silence on the uh, on the Creeper if he wants to. Oh I wow! Never innovate. That's uh. This gives him a lot more breathing room, I think, over time. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he can squeeze in hero powers when he needs them. He can squeeze in rafts. Um, it makes his turns a little bit more flexible if he finds those spells which he needs. Start clearing his minions, but Keeper definitely needs to come down this turn, I think. Just to uh, leverage the board a little bit more. Silence in the Creeper, do you like that? I mean, what I'm, wo like, what I'm wondering is it feels good, but there's a Blessing of Kings in Kalento's hand, and if you're Stan Sivka, based on the slower start uh, that Kalento had, I mean, he did play minions on turn 2, on turn 3, but they were all off the top. So you're thinking to yourself, he's holding situational cards, perhaps secrets he doesn't want to play, which is weird, because he would have played them earlier, uh, maybe buffs, maybe big cards. So Blessing of Kings is definitely in the range of things Kalento is holding, so waiting to use Keeper is something that Sensivka is at least considering in this case. 
goes to the trade there, so Blessing of Kings can come down on this Argent Squire if he wants to. And then he has a 5-5 with Divine Shield. There's also Shredder as well, which is a nice steady 4-drop. Uh, Does most of a battle come into this equation at all? I think right now what Kalento's considering, I mean, on turn 5 you're going to curve a lot better with Muster for Battle, right? It's like, uh, you just go Muster for Battle, Hero Power, yeah, you're forcing for sure. the Druid uh, on his turn 6 to use a swipe. It's not necessarily something that's too bad, but then you follow it up with Challenger. So he's suddenly out of uh, one of his best ways to wipe a board after a Challenger comes out. So Kalento will maybe go for Shredder if only to fill out the board with minions. Contest that 2-4 very nicely, mm. force a trade with the Shredder, and puts Tensifk on the back foot, because he's curving perfectly from here on out. Yeah, that per that curve is e exceptional as well. Like you said, he can curve out beautifully with the Muster, Dr. Boom, Challenger, he just has everything he needs going in the late game. And this was a clunky hand to start with, but he drew into those two drops, he drew into those one drops that he needed. Yeah. All right, so the buff is out, and Lord Walker Again? Cho comes out to ruin someone's day. I'm not sure whose, but someone's for sure. Savage Wars found there's a force of nature ready to go for Stan Sivka. Would you ever... No, you can't Savage War up with a Paladin. That's suicide. <laughs> oh, man. Look what Cho... What's he doing here? He just keeps showing up at this event. Is this the third time we've seen him? Yeah, he keeps showing up. He keeps showing up. Yeah, that's yeah, what he's like doing. <laughs> So Stansivka here uh, with a third headache. I feel like Stansivka always gets those. Once, uh, it didn't really matter because the trade was, was done. But in this case, there's no trade possible. Stansivka's looking I've at this and he's thinking, I've got to play for tempo. That's all I have. And I think trying to nail the Force of Nature Savage Roar as fast as he can is a viable approach. Yeah, I do like this. I mean, Lil Walker Cho is a bit of a nuisance, but Kalento might even find it's more of a nuisance for him as well. Exactly. But Shredder's going to come down. He can leave Lil Walker Cho up if he chooses. You know what's funny? What's if that? Cho lives, it's an extra two damage on Force of Nature. It it's is. Drawer. Cho might do something useful other than... Do nothing. Yeah. Do nothing. Well, not even do nothing. Just ruin people's day. Oh, Harrison Jones? Not something you're happy to see, I guess, at this stage. Uh, it's mostly useless. Would you play it for tempo? Okay, if you're Stan Sivka, do you ever just go Harrison Jones, put everything on the board, and hope that you can finish it off with Force of Nature, Savage War? Um, or is there no way you're going through if a weapon comes out? I mean, Kalento's curving out just flawlessly. If you play Harrison Jones now, you either tell your opponent you have nothing else, so combo, combo piece, then yeah. a combo. Um, and you swing for face and not trade. I played Harrison. Clint is going to know what's up. He's going to know, right, right, he's got comboed, locked and loaded. He's trying to just take me down and take me out as fast as possible. Are you giving too much information away if you play Harrison Jones? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, we'll see what Kalento opts to do here. One of the ways that Kalento could play this as well is play it very safely. Remove the show, remove everything that falls down. Because again, he could play this like it's a typical match, right? You don't even care too much about the Low Walker show. Maybe you don't even pay attention to it uh, until you have to remove it. Oh man, Stensif goes all in and Kalento might call his bluff. I think he will. Kalento, you know is going to know what's going on. Once you see Harrison come down and you're thinking, wait a minute, why would you play Harrison here? I haven't played a weapon. You must have combo. Those cards seem pretty useless. Millhouse! Hey! Oh! Whoa! 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 Hang whoa. on a minute. Whoa. Is that it? No. He can only... Play the one, can't he? Wait. Wait, That that's it? Wait. Li so the... So Force of Na wait, Force of Nature Savage Roar. I think that's it, dude. That's it. I think he's got it. Oh well, yeah, for sure. I mean, Lord the Walker extra gets two, two damage, the six damage he can use his face to trigger one. I mean, the secret or Lord Walker Cho. That's game. Oh wow, Sansa could do three zero. When what? Craziness. Lord Walker Cho, finally you've been <laughs> useful. You're gonna do something for a change. Oh, Lord Walker Cho. Rather than just throw a combo well, and Kalento. Maybe we're not doing correct mathematics, and he actually doesn't have lethal. But from what I see here, it's looking like lethal to me. Oh, let him have it. Let's see if he's got this. Yeah, he does. It's exactly 20. Exactly till thanks to Cho for Stan Sivka. That 0-4 paying dividends to Stan Sivka, who's had to bear with his crap for the entirety of this event so far. You know, for once, Lower Cho actually was useful. Not only that, because when Kalendra saw Lower Cho there, he thought, I'm going to leave that up. Yeah. You know, Druids have the innovates, the, the spells. They're going to need to use 